What's that? What's better looking than the M MP18? Um, absolutely nothing. Can you ask me that question again? <laughs> oh yes. So one of these statements is a lie. Number one, I went to Hiroshima, Japan, stood in front of the board in Mizuno, forging factory and told them to create the Mizuno MP20 iron. Number two, these irons have copper inside them and they feel flipping awesome. Oh, there's a mark on it. <laughs> oh, heaven, stay there. The thing is, Mizuno hasn't put a copper underlay in an iron since the TN87. That is not an iron I've had any sort of experience with, but if it's anything to go by this one, I'm loving life right now. I'm, if you need me, I'm on the golf course, spending time with my new copper compadre. Did you hear that? It is a thing of absolute beauty. Obviously it is, because I made it. So I love it that much. We've got 50 meters. Obviously it requires a four iron. How ironic. Run club, sack the caddy. So I've got the four and seven iron in the MP20. For some reason, I can't seem to get the four iron out of my hands. So Tom, we might need to do a stinger. If you don't mind coming this side, we can get a good angle on it. With it being Mizuno, you don't really need to ask if it's been grain flow forged from a single billet of 1025E pure select mild carbon steel, do you? So this copper underlay came back due to a blind test being held at the Valspar PGA event where Mizuno got all their staff players, players that aren't staff players, to hit, no comment, to hit this coppered iron prototype compared to a non-coppered prototype. The result was absolutely unanimous for everyone voting for copper just based on pure feel and overall feedback. So I thought I'd do the test too. It's, it's like you can't even feel it. What are you looking at? <laughs> I think it's about time I give the seven iron some love, but before I hand over the four iron, you're not having it. We're gonna do a trajectory test. We're gonna hit three shots, one low, one mid flight, and then one high with as little side spin as possible, which is gonna be hard for this sort of iron. That's low, it's just because we're on an elevated T. That counts. So in standard flight. That was quite high. Oh, A1 position. And then high. I'm going to try and beat that one. Could be interesting. Ha! Moon ball. Get my good side. Right, so there is one negative I've got of this iron. Um, didn't think I'd have one, but we all saw teaser photos of the copper finish at the open, when in actual fact that was just the underlay. I know, no copper finish. I'm not crying, you're crying. This iron is all about the process. It's not about the technology, it's how, it's the dedication to the attention to detail. I mean, it's handcrafted. It is hand painted. This thing has had some serious love in the forging factory. And to me, that mirrors the Japanese culture, the dedication, the drive to make something so close to perfect. <laughs> You may think this is my reflection, but in actual fact, this is the MP20 Al edition. Hey! So as you know, I play currently the MP18s and I adore these irons. It's gonna take some serious kicking out of the bag for it's gonna take a good iron to come, come along. And maybe the MP20 is it. We will have to find out later on whether they are gonna replace my MP18s. But I think from a visual point of view, 
Comment down below if you disagree or agree. That I think the MP20 is so much better looking than that of the MP18, and I never thought I'd say that. So visually, down at a dress, there's no fluff. It is the equivalent of a, as a clean shave, something I have not got at the moment. Um, ultra thin top line. The offset is almost not there. Again, we're going into an onset category, <laughs> but there's a bit of an illusion with this top line. It's actually tapered, giving this a bit more vertical forgiveness. I think that's a cracking idea because from the eye, it still looks very thin, but if you look down the side of it, it's like, oh, there's a bit more meat there than what you probably would expect. Come on, get close, baby. Just sounds amazing. The lofts of these irons supports Mizuno's tech not spec approach. So expect the seven iron to sit at 34 degrees, which is very modest. It's not gonna break any distance records, but like I said to you before, tech can sit outside in the rain. No one answered the door. This is all about pure, pure crafting. It's got a mark on her. Oh no, it's a smudge. <laughs> So this new MP20 family includes the MP20 blade, which is what we're using today, the MB. Then we've got the MMC, the multi-material iron is back. Still got the wrappers on, we haven't reviewed it yet. The link will be down below when it, we've done that. And then we've got the MP20 HMB, the hot metal blade, completely new. But the whole idea with these three irons is we could chop and change to have a split set and they all blend in as one. Okay, so the pin is on the green. Um, seven iron, it's smack bang in the middle, a bit of left to right would be good. Or oh, absolutely nuke it straight at it, but that's going to have to fly, I think. Has Santa been? I shouldn't run, I've got man flu. Ah, oh, it's short. I think it was straight at it, it's hit this bank and rolled down to the middle, but that's one thing about these irons, we're going to get a lot of spin, so unless you can control that, it's not for you. This isn't mine. Sell? Sell what? Special edition lefty. That's what it means. So if you're a left-hander and you've wanted some sort of MP iron in the past, welcome. So the MP20 SEL includes hybrid muscle backs three to four, so slightly bigger here, and then the muscles, the standard MP20 and the five to pitch. But if you want more info on this, go down in the description below. We've got more information. Do you reckon we should play a hole just left-handed? I've got a four iron here and I've got a seven iron. I've never played golf left-handed. This is beyond horrendous. So this is my alter ego. My name is Alan and I stand on the other side of the golf ball. This is for you lefties out there. I've just shanked it. We're not doing that anymore. Okay, so now it's time for right-handed after we've just made a birdie with, obviously you saw the tee shot, I found it and then made a birdie. We, the footage isn't available, but just believe me. So we're going to play this properly, <laughs> right-handed. We've got the four iron and the seven iron. It's a par five, dog legs to the right. What, I think two of these and we'll get on. Um, the distance is from here, 447 meters. Okay, let's do it. That will do. As we finish this hole, I don't really know what else there is left to say. Um, clearly don't like them, horrendous irons. Don't, don't even get me started again. Um, <laughs> but I've still got them, so I may as well just finish this hole off and enjoy everything about it. But guys, honestly, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions about these irons, put them down in the comment section. Hit the subscribe button, the bell notification, and follow us on social media, the links are below. I'm gonna make an eagle here with just a four iron and a seven iron. I reckon we've probably got 210, which happens to be probably in the middle of both of these irons. Seven iron, it's probably not even, it's not possible. Is it? Four iron's far too much. It's gonna have to be seven iron. Oh. Or do I hit a soft four iron, which I can't do? Soft four iron. That's the only chance of us making eagle. And now cut. Or don't. I think that too soft, but it's rolling out. Short of the green. Too soft, man. Four iron. Half a four iron. 
it's what three quarters of a four iron really. And now we're left with that. Seven iron down, fast downhill slope. Perfect. Oh, left to right, chance for eagle. Get in the hole. Oh, it's not high enough. Damn you. Get on the green. 